OK, let's go down to the start for the next race, which is 10 past 12, race number five, Oxford Brooks University, Brown University. Well, both these crews are now attached and uh, uh, the umpire's launch just swung around behind them. But before that, uh, the, the Cox and the Oxford Brooks crew, I've never seen this before. He, uh, he knelt up in the boat and he worked, worked his way down the boat, just gently calling each man's name, just psychologically making sure they were ready to race. He stood there and sort of really high up in the boat and just looked every man in the eye. And then he got back down, put his cap back on and then just put all the uh, electronics together. The umpire then started to give the call over. He's comfortable. He's looked over his shoulder at the umpire. Both hands are up now. Brown on the far side. Oxford Brooks on this side. And as we wait for the start, oh, both the hands are up. They're not steady yet. The boats are just rocking slightly in a slight cross headwind here at the moment, just off the end of the island. Brown Cox just lowers his hand and uh, Copas from uh, in his GB top just uh, keeps his hand high for the, in the Oxford Brooks boat. He's not quite happy. There's a bit of swing on the boat at the moment and now the hands are down. Both crews ready and they're away. And Brown power off at 43 strokes per minute. And Oxford Brooks at 44, they're not still into their full length at the moment, still about three quarter slide, sitting tall. And now they start to lengthen out with about uh, 30 strokes into the start of the race. And it looks like Oxford Brooks have really got a flyer here. And they're going towards the end of the island and it looks like Brooks have got about a quarter of a length lead as we get towards the end of the island. It's Brown now who just get into the boom area, but Oxford Brooks got there first. Oxford Brooks dropped their rate down to 38 strokes per minute. Brown at 39, but it looks like Brooks got away really well indeed. They want this race badly. Haven't won Thames Challenge Cup for quite a few years now, and they want to get this one back again. And they're still at 38 as they approach the corner mile signal, and it looks like they're over... It must be half a length lead as they approach that signal, and it looks like the Brown University from the United States of America have got a lot to do as we go on through the race. And they, they, can they get back on this uh, superb start that Oxford Brooks ha has got? Yes, number one goes up first in there, and it is. It's a length already by the, the quarter mile, 400 metres off the start. They're about 500 now as they go down the, tr uh, down the course further and approaching the, uh, the barrier, which is 600 metres off the start. Matthew, what's it look like to you? It looks like Oxford Brooks are going to win to me. That is a class act, a class eight there coming up the course. They are absolutely immaculate. The red tops and the matching blades are a good start, but the rowing is bloody brilliant. They're coming up to the barrier. They've got clear water. This shouldn't happen in a final. It's, they've got a length of clear water by the barrier. You can't do that in a final at Henley. This is very, very smart. You've got Copas in the back in his office calling the shots. He will never not call the shots, that man. His brother at two, giving it what for. They've got two and a half lengths now. They're just going away like a knife through butter. That is amazing. They are not going to lose this one, that's for certain. I'm sorry, up at Remenham, up towards the finish, you've got very little to talk about, about for, apart from how good they are. That is Oxford Brooks A. They have had such a run through here. The closest race they had until yesterday was against their C crew. If you have three crews in an event, you know the top crew must be pretty damn good. And then Cornell were half a length behind them yesterday. Uh, the brown crew are no slouches, but I'm afraid they're being humbled, humbled by the Oxford Brooks A crew. They are just immaculate as they go up the course. When you get to the quarter mile and you know you've got the medal in your pocket, that's quite impressive. And they're just going on up the course. I suspect they'll be smiling inside, but they won't be smiling outside just yet. They'll save that for the finish. But that is really, really good rowing. They've gone past Forley and they're coming up towards the three-quarter mile. He may as well put the signal up before they get there because you know it's not going to be turned over. It's a really, really good race. What can you see from Romanum? I'm sorry, I got the best bit. That's when it was decided. Oh, I, I think I, it was. I think Matthew was almost rendered speechless by that start from Oxford Brooks. Uh, yeah, they're just passing th three quarter mile signal now, waiting for that to go up. Uh, just the blade work in the Brooks crew is just outstanding. This is probably one of the best British student crews for a 
Brooks were the last crew uh, from this country to win the Temple back in 2006. And they're so focused on winning this back for the UK. Um, speaking to Rory, he, he's copus in the stroke, in the coxswain seat. Everything is being geared towards winning this race today. They've been racing in Europe against the best in the world. They've raced the German national crew, the Polish national crew, and just they're powering all. Brown probably have closed a little bit. It's not quite the two and a half lengths. Well, maybe it's length, length and a bit of clear water. They just power away from me, just looking smooth, looking brilliant. Uh, you know, what, what, what else can I say about this? They're just absolutely outstanding. You know, if you were going to be devil's advocate, you'd say, mm, OK, how would they have got on against the Varsity Crews and the ladies? But uh, they're a temple crew. They're eligible for the temple. And it looks like they're going to win this uh, win this race quite comfortably now. There's a little bit of a battle of the, the British Coxes, though, because both Rory Copas and Neil McKenzie and the Brown crew are both Abingdon School Coxes. So uh, with, the, with the school getting knocked out of the PE yesterday, at least, you know, they're going to have one representative. Uh, collecting a medal later on today because unless something seriously dramatic happens in the final four or five hundred meters as they come through the enclosures this is brooks to win they've been trying all for years to win this row the final but uh, lost out but this time for the first time since 2006 it looks like we're going to have a british temple challenge cup and it's going to be brooks the only uh, other british crew to have won this event this decade and I think, uh, I certainly, Daniel, I agree with you. This is a f fantastic crew coming down here. Certainly, Brown have been good all the way through, but uh, they have come up against uh, more than their match in this Oxford Brooks A crew. Uh, Jones, Copus, Hoogland, Grant, Grisdale, Hawkins, Martin Smith and Cassells, and another Rory Copus in the uh, Cox's seat. And uh, they're enjoying this. You can look up there. They've got a lovely rhythm. They're good blade work, really snappy catches, powerful finishes, and looking absolutely together as they come down. The, uh, the Brown University crew, a bit more characteristic in terms of uh, their American style, fairly uh, snappy on the catches, uh, perhaps pulling the finishes a bit, but the Brooks crew is looking serene as they come down towards the finish now with three lengths lead and tremendous cheers from the banks. Very popular win this for Oxford Brooks University crossing the line now ahead of Brown University. And the bow of boat 103 named Pete Lowe crosses the line the brooks boys are absolutely delighted screaming and shouting and whoa delighted uh boat naming ceremony last night uh the boat was wrapped up they unveiled it uh, richard spratley gave a very nice speech lots and lots of old brooks boys there to witness the boat naming and it was pete lowe's name that was revealed uh, he burst into tears, tried to say a few words of thank you. Uh, but there was all the old guard there, all the old Brooks lads were there. Alex Henshaw would just about managed to fit into his old uh, Brooks blazer. But it was a lovely, lovely ceremony. And, well, that just about caps it off for Brooks, isn't it? Uh, the newly named boat crosses the line ahead of Brown. And the Brooks lads are absolutely cock a hoop. The guy in uh, bow, he's got some energy, that kid. He's still jumping up and down. He's pointing at people, showing his guns. Woohoo! Go on, son, enjoy it. And he is. That's absolutely fantastic. Uh, right. Okay. What's next up then? Uh...